<clears throat> John chapter 20. It's funny because as a family, we're reading about the pregnancy of Mary, soon the birth of Jesus, and now we're coming to the resurrected Jesus. How is it when it comes to Jesus, we will put out a manger scene? But Easter, we won't put out the empty tomb scene. And the empty tomb that we're going to read about in, in chapter 20 is the salvation, is the Christianity mark. Not the manger. Listen, we left off with religion, chapter 19. If that's where it ends, the death of Jesus, the death of Stalin, the death of a pope, the death of a religious leader, the death of a mother, a death of a, of a business owner, a death of a president, a death of whoever. That's it. It's gone. Hope is dead. And we left off with a dead Jesus. What makes Jesus more important than any other man? John chapter 20. Jesus was just no mere man. He was 100% God, 100% man. And this is what rises him, pun intended, above all. This is why you don't follow a pope. This is why you don't follow a man. The first day of the week, <clears throat> try to get that from Good Friday to, to the Sunday. Three days and three nights as Jonas was in the whale. Three days and three nights. Mary Magdalene early, early, when it was yet dark, before 6 a.m., before the cock crude. When it would get dark onto the sepulchre and seeing the stone taken away from the sepulchre. Uh oh, stones are already gone. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple, which would be John, whom J Jesus loved, and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulchre. And we know not where they have laid him. The body. The, the body's gone. Body snatchers. The walking dead. The zombie agopolites. Peter therefore went forth and the, that other disciple came to the sepulchre. So they both, so they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulchre. He stooping down and looked in. So something like that hole had to bend, you had to bend over. Something. Or John's, really or John's really tall. He stooping down and looked in and saw the linen clothes lying. Yet went he not in. There's just a, a pile of clothes. And we're going to see in, in a little bit with Peter's explanation that they were folded. There's a body missing. Then comes Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre. There goes Peter again. Boom, he goes right in. <clears throat> went into the sepulchre and see if the linen clothes lie. And the napkin, Zechariah 12, 10, Revelation 1, 7, the napkin. No, that's the wrong one. Hold on. John eleven forty four. 44, excuse me. The, lap, the napkin that was about his head. But with Lazarus, Jesus says, unbind him. This is something that Jesus could not do himself, like Lazarus. That was about his, head, about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. No body. Now I've heard something about this napkin being folded, Jewish custom, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to tell you what it is because the Bible tells us we're not to follow Jewish customs. It's not written in the law, so it's not important. But there's one thing important that that story will take you away from one important, very reality fact. Jesus is gone. And he left his, his napkin and his linen clothes behind. Anybody fail to miss something that, that you would you would think that it would be a perfect picture for a Christian? Jesus was raptured. He left his clothes behind. Isn't that what's going to happen to us? Isn't our blood and guts and all that stuff going to be... Well, his blood has already been poured out. 
chapter uh, 19. The body of Jesus is gone. So you know what's going to happen if you were to lay me in a tomb or a coffin or whatever, my dead body? At the rapture, you're going to look in, you're going to see, just whatever you buried me in, whatever clothes. I'm going to be gone like Jesus was, was gone. And people are going to say, he's not here. I don't know where he went. I don't know what happened to that body. Maybe the worms ate it. But not Jesus' body. Then went in also the other disciple. Here's two people, two witnesses. And eyes of, and, and a testimony of two. Which came first to the sepulcher and he saw and believed. 1 Corinthians 14, 40. The body was gone. John believed. And as yet they knew not the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Matthew 27, 62 and 63. John believed the body was dead. He had no knowledge of what the resurrection was. And yet they saw Lazarus in chapter 11. So they had knowledge, they, I mean, they did not have the knowledge, but they have heard. They heard over and over Jesus tell them, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, and on the third day I'm going to be resurrected. He said it over and over and over, and they still didn't get it. Here's that moment they've been waiting for. Here's the moment that seals my salvation. He's not there. And he hasn't been stolen. He hasn't been manhandled. We're going to find out in a minute what happened to him. Then the disciples went away again unto their own home. There's no joy. If they had come to realize what just happened, all to what has happened, man, like John and like Paul and Silas in that prison house, they'd be singing praises. But they just, okay, done, over, let's go home. But Mary stood without at the sepulchre weeping. Mary stayed. The two disciples go and she's staying there. And he, he just not just looking over at her. Let's go down. And as she wept, where did you see that before? Wow, we're going back to Lazarus' funeral. You see God writing to us. You, you see something else important? Scripture with scripture. She stood, she stooped down and looked into the scepter. Again, that scepter is. She was at the only entrance to the scepter. What was she doing? And see two angels in white sitting. <clears throat> this would picture the mercy seat. There's a seat of God with two cherubim on either side, but they don't have wings. The one sitting at the head would be the head of the bed, and the other sitting at the feet. The feet of the where the body of Jesus, not Jesus. So when you go to a funeral, you say, oh, that's Jim. That's the body of Jim. Jim is either in glory or Jim is burning in hell. Where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said unto her, woman, why weepest thou? These angels don't understand what man is doing. They've already seen the resurrected Jesus. It's like, hey, glory to God, he spoke about it. They know the scriptures. They know what was happening. They're like, what on earth are you weeping about, lady? This guy, well, just Jesus. I didn't mean to say God. This Jesus, he's risen. What are you weeping for? Angels can't understand men, and men can't understand angels. 
No angel can ever rejoice in the finished work of Jesus Christ because no angel can be redeemed. Those angels that follow Satan, that are damned for the lake of fire for all eternity, they could never get right. They could never be washed in the blood. And when Jesus died on that cross, those angels in heaven by what on earth is going on here? Why does God have all this love for that particular creature that keeps mistreating him, keeps rejecting him, keeps disobeying him, keeps doing And we're up here, we're doing everything we're supposed to be doing. We're praising except for uh, one third of them. And the angels have witnessed Jesus in his entire life saying, hey, listen, this is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is And they understand it. And they look at man like, what is your problem? Why are you weeping? She saith unto them, because they have taken away my Lord. They believe in the body snatching. Somebody stole Jesus. See, that's religion. That's back in Micaiah and Judges. Someone stole my God, someone stole my priest. That's religion. Now, if somebody could steal the body of Jesus, if someone did, that's religion. I can walk into I'm gonna figure it out. I can walk into Baptist churches today and I can probably go up somewhere in that place and steal their religion and walk out. Well, I can go up to you style and steal your Bible. Thy words have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. There's scripture I know that I, I don't need a Bible. The government came right now and took all our Bibles. I still got enough scripture in my heart. How about you? If they would have came to take what you have hold precious. They have stolen. And I know not where they have laid him. And when she had said, uh, when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing. And knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus says unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? That's kind of interesting with John chapter 11 because Jesus himself wept. Who seekest thou? Really? I mean, she came, but she stayed. She stayed in mourning. She wasn't seeking anybody after she realized the body's gone. She had come for Jesus, but now her hope is gone. So she just stayed by and was in tears and mourning. She supposing him to be the gardener. Genesis 2 8. There's your second Adam. In a garden with a woman and angels. Man, if the Jews would have had to believe that he was the Messiah, can you imagine how glorious morning this sepulchre would have been? This would have been the beginning of the of the millennial kingdom. And perfect. Yes. Said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, hast thou taken somewhere else, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take oh, I will take him away. Like Joseph of Armenia, she wants the dead body of Jesus. Jesus says unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say master, there's that master. Those rabbis had the people calling them master. You walk into the church, and here's what you say, say, pastor such and such, brother such and such. You will walk into their synagogue and say, master. You know what that meant? That meant, as far as the title goes, I'm in charge of you. You do what I tell you to do. I control you. That's what it means. For Jesus is the title that it's the title that he is God control of all things. Everything goes by the order of God, even Satan. Job one, Job two. 
Satan may be running around. Satan may be our enemy, but he still has a master he has the answer to. Praise God on that. He said, why hasn't Earth been bombarded by big asteroids like the movies and the people say the Earth's going to... Because God said to that, those asteroids, don't go in that path. Haley's comic is supposed to be coming back again. I, I, I read something about it. Why hasn't... Because God says, you just stay on that path I put you on and don't get out of it. But when the master of all creation during the tribulation period lets it all go, it'll all go. Jesus said, said unto her, touch me not. Get this now. For I am not yet ascended to my father. Don't touch me. I have not been to the father yet. Isn't it interesting Jesus did not show up to Peter? Why? Well, you were one of them. I knew him not. You'll be, I I have no idea that I'm not, I'm not cussing. I don't know him. That's why Jesus didn't show up to him. John had already seen the, the glory of the cross. Maybe if Peter and John would have stayed around with Mary. But it's interesting because let's see. Let's jump down real quick. She said, don't touch me. I, I have not ascended to my father. And verse 19, he shows up to the disciples. And another gospel says they touched him. From that Sunday morning. It doesn't really give us a time in 19, 20, 21, what time it is. But that same day, the same day at evening, at about 6 o'clock, 12 hours, less than 12 hours, Jesus has ascended to the Father and returned back. That's a quick trip. Man cannot get to Saturn. It takes many years of your life to go to Saturn. And those are just plans, aren't true? But God can go all the way to glory and back within 12 hours, and quicker than that. And do you realize that man in the scientific and science fiction stories and all that wants to do this? Star Trek, beam me up. And we're going to have that same body that Jesus has in his glorified state, and we're going to be able to do this. We're going to have the ability to be there and there. Just like Jesus. I am not yet ascended to my father. But go tell my brethren. And say unto them. I ascend unto my father. He's going to go. As soon as he's done with her. He's going to the father. And your father. Mary. The disciples. His brethren. Not only Jesus' father. But their father. And to my God. And to your God. There is now, because of the finished work of Jesus Christ, God has become your father. Your father has become God, an intimate family relationship. Because of the cross, because of the entombment, and the resurrection. Look at that right there. Mary Magdalene came to, and told the disciples that she had spoken, uh, she had seen the Lord. She had seen the Lord. And that he had spoken these things unto her. She's a great testimony. Who was the first person ever to speak the gospel? Christ died for his sin, was buried, and arose again according to scriptures. Mary Magdalene. She held the first gospel message. Can women preach the gospel? Mary did. She went back to those 11 men that followed Jesus. How's that? How are you going to fight that one? I know a woman, I know a woman, or I don't know her personally, but I, I've seen her work in England. Is it wrong? She's proclaimed the gospel. What does it say here? She went back to a, she went back to a group of men. Now, was she older than those men? Were those men older than her? I have no idea. 
but she went by Jesus. Jesus told her, go to my disciples, males, women, go to them and tell them the gospel. How's that for a revelation? Now, a woman can't be a pastor. A woman can't be a preacher as far as a head of a church. Because she's usurping her authority. She's not supposed to be doing the bill. She's not supposed to be organizing things and, and telling men what to do. She's not telling men what to do. She's proclaiming what she saw. What did she see? She saw the resurrected Christ and spoke with him. And the angels as a testimony. Peter, yes, Mary, you did see the empty empty scepter. Yeah, I ran right in there. It was napkin folded and everything. John, I stooped down. Yep, I saw, and I walked in afterwards. <clears throat> Imagine Mary saying, well, "Why didn't you guys stick around, man? If you, you ever have, if you would have sticked around, you, you, oh man, I'm telling you, Jesus showed up." Then the same day at evening, 6 p.m. The chapter started off very early in the morning. Being the first day of the week. Again, it's how the chapter started. When the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews. This is the first Sunday service and it's for fear. <laughs> This is the foundation of the church, the true church of Christ on a Sunday night. And they're gathered together for fear because those Jews out there may be wanting to get them now. We've got your leader. He's dead and gone. Now let's go get those 11 men. Came Jesus and stood in the midst. And saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Well, they're a bunch, they're, they're, they're scared. They're frightened. Peace. Don't be afraid. Didn't you listen to my messenger, Mary? Oh, we can't listen to her, Lord. She's a woman. And when he had said so, when he had so said, he showed them his hands and his side. Why would he show him his hands and side? Because they still have the marks. You realize the Bible says we're going to get a new body. Amen. Glory to God. No more pain. No more sorrow. No more suffering. Amen. And glory to God. A body probably with no freckles. I would believe. No marks. No spots. No scars. Yet when we get to heaven, when we see Jesus, we for all eternity will see those marks in his hand and his feet. I don't know. I think his side. There's another place with Thomas. I believe it says his side. Where the spear went in. We, see, I, this is where I can't scope heaven. This is where I can't understand We'll have no knowledge of sin, correct? So they say. No envy, there'll be no adultery, no cussing, no swearing, no lies, thank God. How are we going to look on these marks in Jesus and not remember that, hey, we were sinners at one time? And the Bible says that Jesus said that the Word said, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word shall never pass away. How can we not pick up the Bible and read it and say, I don't understand. How, I cannot tell you how much we're going to remember and how much we're going to know once we get to eternity. Because if we didn't have no more knowledge of sin, absolutely no knowledge, then those marks in his body would be nothing. I'm out in eternity. The new heavens and the new earth, there's no time. And Jesus walks up to me, puts his arm out. He's got these marks in his hand. If I did not remember that, I'd be like, wow, what's wrong with you? So there's got to be something, and I don't know what, that when we see those hands and those feet, 
that was because of me. And when we read Isaiah 53 in the future, in eternity, that nation of Israel has got to realize what Jesus did for them and how they were punished for not receiving him. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you. As my Father has sent me, even so send I you. What did God send Jesus to do? What did he, what did he do for three and a half years? He taught and he preached the gospel. So I send you, as the Father sent me, we are still here, according to the prayer of Jesus that we did in chapter 18, I think it was, 17 or 18. We are here to take God's word to the people. That's it. If you're not doing that, you're not doing what Jesus was sent by God to do, being saint, sending us. That's the commission. Mark 16 ends with go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. He said, well, that, that was to decide because, you know, they had the signs and, and confirming the word. And Paul says in Romans 12, how beautiful are the feet that carry the gospel. And when he had said this, he breathed on them. And says unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. Genesis 2 7, Job 23 4, the breathing. You don't receive the, the Holy Ghost by breathing on. And that's a, that's a particular religious teaching today. Get the breath of God. Holy Ghost, not the Holy Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit that abides in us, not by breathing, but by faith in the gospel of Jesus Christ. He died according to the scriptures, was buried, and rose again according to the scriptures. They're going to receive the Holy Ghost again in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 2. So that's where you get this false teaching. And you got to keep receiving the Holy Ghost over and over and over. And this is where John is, well, Acts chapter 2, this is where John has been. He shall send the Spirit. He shall baptize you with the Holy Spirit or with fire. Now we're getting to the point of salvation. In order to be saved, you've got to get the Holy Spirit. That's by the gospel. But he's talking to the 11 in the upper room, and there's no one else here. There's no Jews. There's no, listen, they're fearing the Jews. There's no Gentiles. The disciples, the beginning of the commission before they go actually out and do something, Jesus gives them the Holy Ghost. Whoso, who, whosoever sin ye remit, they are remitted unto them, and whosoever sin ye retain, they are retained. That is the Roman Catholic teaching verse for the priest to use with your sins when you go into the closet. Right there. But he's not talking to Roman Catholic priests. He's not talking to the priests. He's talking to 11 disciples who just finally got the truth. They're newborn babes. How old are they? An hour old, would you say? They're going to go out in, in our next book. We'll be stu studying Lord willing. They're going to go out. God is not going to send them out in the book of Acts without the Holy Spirit. So Jesus has got to give it to them. These men's salvation is very particular because, all right, if you were to go by the salvation of the disciples for a moment, all right, have you lived and walked and ate and drank and been in the presence of Jesus? Absolutely not. Then you're lost going to hell. I can't go. I cannot go to heaven because I, I did not walk and eat with Jesus. How's that? Have you ever been 
baptized at John's baptism. No, I've never been baptized at John's baptism. Then me, me, Stiley Hay was going to hell because I was never baptized at John's baptism. Have you ever seen the resurrected Christ? Nope, never seen him. Then I'm going to hell because not only have I not seen the resurrected Christ, I have not been baptized with John's baptism, and I have not lived and breathed with John, with Jesus Christ. Luke 1, 1 John 1. I'm going to hell. And yet, the characteristics I just read to you, being baptized with John's baptism, living and, and being and seeing Jesus, Luke 1, 1 John 1, and seeing the resurrected Christ, that's what made them an apostle. And there are a church out there, an apostolic church, absolutely like. In order to be an apostle in the book of Acts, you have to have John's baptism, you have to live with Jesus, you have to see the resurrected Jesus. These disciples have now become the apostles, and being the apostles that no one else can be, once these guys die out, who receive a special call in the Holy Spirit, that I don't get. See, I am saved today. I am not going to hell because, because I was John's baptism, seeing Jesus and the resurrection. I am not going to hell because I have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, the gospel. That is the church age today. I am not an apostle. I cannot be an apostle and never be an apostle. I could be a disciple, but I cannot be an apostle. Now we got a problem. What about Paul? Paul, the Bible even says, and Paul says, the apostle Paul. How can he be an apostle? Well, first of all, let's break it off backwards. Did he ever see the resurrected Christ? Okay, boom, he's got that one. Has he ever lived and walked and followed Jesus? He had to. He was one of the Pharisees. It could have been one of the Pharisees that gave him a hard time. And some believe he was that rich young ruler. All right, that's could John, I mean, could Paul have been baptized of, of John's baptism? Absolutely. And being called apostle and the Holy Spirit allowing him to be called apostle, guess what three characteristics he's got? So your question, if you were to ask, what is an apostle different from a disciple? Okay, the Bible says, if, if I forsake my family, don't want to love the Lord, don't want to do right by the word, and people and Christians and, and everything like that, I want to follow Jesus and do right. I can be his disciple. Now, what's the difference of growing to be an apostle? Can I ever be of up frame into the, the corporate ladder grown of being an apostle? No. Because an apostle in the Bible is, again, John's baptism, living and seeing Jesus. Read Luke 1. He says, we have been with him. We walked with him. 1 John 1, 1 says that we were we beheld him. We touched him. And then seeing the resurrected Christ. We can't do that. And yet, when you go down where we live, two miles, and there's apostle, I can't say their name, apostle, whatever they call it, church. Impossible. So when we read chapter 20, I get rid of that apostle religion. Because I am a Christian by what? The resurrected Christ. I am not an apostle because I don't follow what an apostle is. And so we see here a Roman Catholic doctrine set out by the apostles. And if they steal this from the apostle, what does their church teach? Every single one of their popes goes back to Peter. So you see what the Roman Catholic Church has proclaimed themselves to be? The apostles. And once the last apostle dies, they get to the point where that final apostle, when he died, the last one that saw the resurrected Christ, the last one that walked with Jesus and lived with Jesus, and the last one that was baptized with John's baptism, once that guy died, the apostles died. There were no more. And there are plenty of other apostles besides Peter, James, John, and, and, and Paul. And we have a church here, the apostolic accession, which means 
Now, I say we can trace our salvation back to one of the apostles, one of the disciples. It's true. But I am not an apostle because of that. I'm just saying my tree roots of Christianity goes back to one of, the, to one of those 12 men. I'm counting Paul. But I have no power. I have no authority. I have no spiritual powers because I come from them. I found out that I got a, a family member in my family, came across as a pilgrim, and sold booze and other junk. Are you going to say because of what that guy did, I sell booze? Absolutely not. He's just in my family. But the Catholic Church has gone one step up and say, we have the same power. I have no powers in the apostles. I have Jesus. That's enough. I have the same resurrected Christ. I still have the same Christ that's God and God is Christ. But I have no powers. I have no Mark 16. Even though I am told to go in all the world and preach the gospel, I have the word of God. I don't need to confirm it. It's already been confirmed. How much blood has been shed since Jesus died on the cross? And Jesus even went back and named all the ones that died in the Old Testament. From Abel to, uh, I forget that priest's name. Zacharias. Zacharias. I can't even remember that name. Should name, should have named my boy that name. Then I'd be able to not remember his name. Never remember that name. So you see, look at all the religions. And yet there's one salvation. And I, I had a point in my life, verse 23, I believed that the priest could do that for me. The apostles had that power. See, now we're going to go into Acts. Acts is a trans... Uh, what do they call it? I got the name here. Trans something. Transition. Transition. Yeah. It's going to go from Jewish to Roman. It's going to go from law to grace. You're going to find all kinds of weird doctrines in Acts because things are changing. These men are going to be sent out in the book of Acts, early church. And they're going to have the power to do things that we don't have the power. Because Mark 16 says, you got to confirm that word. And wouldn't you just love to have this power that God has given the apostles? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want this power. I would want God to have the power. I might be a human with his power. I might judge people unrighteously. But God has given these men the power. They have been tried three and a half years. But Thomas, one of the twelve called Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. Uh-oh. So Thomas is going to hell because Jesus didn't breathe the Holy Ghost on him. So let's mark Thomas. He's going to burn in hell. He did not receive the Holy Ghost by Jesus breathing on him. But let's mark it. He's going to hell. Poor Thomas. The other disciples therefore said unto him, We have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Except I see in his hands the print of the nails and put my finger into the print of the nails and thrust my hand into his side I will not believe so what is the first message that the apostles preached we saw Jesus and you won't believe he's got the marks and Thomas as you will deal with anybody on the street yeah well, let me see those marks. He's not believing. Maybe a little attitude. I don't know. You're going to run across your Thomases. And guess what? You're going to want your Thomases in your life. I'll show you why. He's unbelief. And he wants proof. And after eight days, again, his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, 
and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then said he to Thomas, <laughs> Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands. Reach thither thy hand, and thrust it into my side. There's the mark in the side. And be not faithless, but believe. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. He now believes. Now watch. Jesus said to Jesus, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, and thou hast believed. Oh, Thomas didn't go to hell because he didn't get the breath of the Holy Ghost on him. He's counted as righteous and believer. So you see... Not receiving the breath of Jesus or the Holy Ghost didn't declare salvation. <laughs> I do know one thing, though. When it, the book of Acts, I don't see Thomas's name anywhere. <laughs> he may have lost that power to go do something. I don't know. I have no idea. But Jesus said, go ahead. Take that finger and put it in my side. That hand. He says, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. Hebrews 11, 1, that's me. Thomas, April 1987, a man named Stiley in some place called uh, Waterford, He's going to kneel down and he's going to believe what I have done for him upon that cross in that empty tomb. And Thomas, you saw me. He has never seen me. And he said, blessed, happy is that one. And anybody, after Thomas dies, anybody who has never seen Jesus Christ and believed on him, Jesus says, blessed are they. Happy are you. So Jesus, again, <clears throat> ruled out, get rid of the pictures of me. That's not going to help. Matter of fact, it'd be a lot better if you didn't have pictures of me. How's that? Get rid of the statues. Blessed are they that have not seen. Thomas needed proof. You know how many people... Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Can you imagine how many people actually saw Jesus if you were to stand? I know at least 5,000. I know at least 9,000, counting men only, not the women and children, the Bible says. You're going to tell me 9,000 men are going to tell a story about one man? I don't think there were even 9, I don't even think there were 5,000 men that knew Stalin or any of them. And that's not counting the women and the children. It's not counting the, the all the priests, all the Levites, the, the disciples, all the people in the cities that Jesus visited, all the Samaritans that got saved that afternoon from that town with a woman at the well. I believe because of the word, when I read the word. Thomas need to see the hand prints in the side because he don't have the word. Though he heard the word from the disciples. And I'm reading about I'm not rebuking Thomas. He needed proof. Amen. I've got my proof written down that Thomas didn't have a completed Bible. Thomas never had a completed Bible. I do. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples. Why? They're Jews. Jews require signs. Thomas wanted a sign. And he's doing signs to them. And remember the Pharisees will show us a sign. He's doing things for disciples that he couldn't do for the unbelievers. Which are not written in this book. So there are more things that happen with the life of Jesus that has ever not been recorded yet. I don't know if they're recorded in heaven. But these are written. These. What? 
the entire Gospel of John is written. Every word that John wrote in his Gospel are written that ye might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and believing ye may you might have life through his name. So why do I open up my street preaching message with John 3.16? These things are written that you might believe that Jesus is Christ, the Son of God. This gospel was written for people to believe on Jesus. So if you've got somebody who's an agnostic and really seriously trying to find out if God is real, and I've done this. I don't know if they follow my directions, but I have done it. I said, listen, if you'll, if you'll do something for me, do. it's not hard. If one you take one, the first night you do it, I want you to say God whatever whatever you think about God, I want you openly to God. I don't say press, just talk to God. Say God, I don't believe you, or I'm not sure about you. I have no idea. I, I, just open up your heart. And if you'll read the gospel, gospel of John, you read just chapter one. Get done with chapter one, close the book, go to bed, whatever. And I said the second night, if you open up to God and say God. I had whatever, however, be honest. And if you read chapter two and close the book and go to bed or whatever. And if you do that, I don't think you get to chapter 20. We well, may get to chapter 20, but if you would do that, this gospel was written that you might believe that Jesus is Christ. Now, if somebody is really truly seeking God, truly and unsure, like Thomas. Before they finish the Gospel of John out, don't you think that God will work in his heart for salvation? And wouldn't it be true salvation if he's reading the Bible? And he meets Jesus and Jesus speaks to him and he believes on the God, the Jesus of the Gospel of John. Wouldn't that be true salvation? Yes, because John said these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. A lot better give him a CD. A lot better give them a preacher's message. Give them a gospel. This gospel is written that people might believe. Luke, we read, Luke is, is a presentation in order, he said, with extra stories that we don't find in the gospels. To prove to, I forgot, with Theolopolis, and a history documented account by official doctor, official person of that time, the account of Jesus Christ. Matthew is written for the Jewish people that this is their king. This is their Messiah. John writes away from Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and John writes the salvation of God. Jesus as God. Now, if you got a Jehovah Witness, it's teeter tottering on the fence. If you can get him to go read a chapter a day seriously and pray to God. And if he's truly, really, really searching, there's an opportunity for him to see that Jesus is God and to believe. Now notice what John said. Let's look at what he said. But these things are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, that they believe in ye might. Now John is not saying, okay, every person you say read one chapter of my book, Every night with prayer, you're going to get sick. No. They might. You are sending, I believe, listen, I'm not against Romans Road. I think it's great because it's all scripture. Still, you may push. You might you might get to the end of the road and you shouldn't have got to the end of the road. But if, I, if you send somebody off with one chapter of John and they're truly seeking with prayer, there it is. You want you personally, you're saved. You want you want more. You want to know more about Jesus Christ. Churches run to Matthew. I got sick and tired of Matthew. I run to Luke, but the but John himself says, "Listen, if you really want to know that he's Christ. You want to know that he's the Son of God. You read my gospel." We got one more to go.